Hello ladies and gents and welcome back to another video on the channel. If you've checked out the channel recently you would see I've brought out a part 1 of a transfer update part 4. This is part 2 of that transfer update and we will start with Everton on this update. They have brought in quite a few reinforcements to their squad. They have brought in Amadou Onana from Lille for £33.5 million. He is a central defensive midfielder. Highly, highly rated by the national coach. And he will come in there and give some versatility, some, some work rate and some also creativity in there as well. They've also brought in experienced Wolves and England international Connor Cody on a season-long loan. He will provide some experience, some leadership and some reinforcements in that central defensive defence position. They've also brought in Ruben Vinagre from Sporting Lisbon on a season-long loan. They've brought in former Burnley player James Tarkovsky on a free transfer. He will go in there and play alongside Connor Cody as well. Great reinforcement, great signing, especially on a free transfer. And they're brought in Dwight McNeil from Burnley for an undisclosed fee. It says it's an undisclosed fee, but I think it was between 20 million and 25 million pounds for this signing. He'll be unpredictable. He got two goals on his debut in pre-season. But apart from that, he's not really lit the world alive just yet. Hope, he'll be hoping that Frank Lampard can bring the best out of him and hoping that he can repay his price tag very, very quickly. Overall, their business so far is okay, Everton. They definitely need a striker with Richarlison leaving it and Calvert-Lewin out injured. Rondon's just not good enough for this level at the moment anymore as well. So they definitely need a striker. And probably a midfielder as well. They are being linked with Idris Agana Gay. He's being linked with a move back to Goodison Park. So if that materialises, they've got Onana and Gay in there as well. Champions League experience as well. So hopefully they can get reinforcements in Everton and have a far better season than they have last season. But they are beginning the season on two straight defeats. So we'll see at the end of the window where Everton are and where you think they will be at the end. Deals out for Everton. Nathan Broadhead has joined Wigan on a season-long loan. Richarlison, the most notable one, has joined Tottenham for £60 million. John Joe Kenny has gone to Hertha Berlin on a free transfer. Chip Tossan has joined Besiktas on a free transfer. Fabian Delph has been released alongside Andy Lonergan as well. Gilfie Sigurdsson has been released. And Ellis Sims has joined Sunderland on loan so again we'll see how Everton gets on but there is plenty of time left in the window Fulham have brought in plenty of reinforcements for their return to the Premier League they brought in Shane Duffy on a season long loan from Brighton they brought in Burnt Leno for eight million pounds from Arsenal good sign in that they brought in a youngster called Callum McFarlane from Bradfield College on a free transfer. Jao Paulina as well from Sporting Lisbon for £20 million. Really good signing this, out the blue. Champions League proven Portuguese international. Really, really good signing. We'll see how he gets on for Fulham. Andres Pereira as well for £10 million from Manchester United. He needed to leave United in my opinion, but we'll get on to them after. Christian Skularak from Juventus on a free transfer. He'll probably go into their under-23s. Mena Solomon from Shakhtar Donetsk on a season-long loan. Kevin Mbabu from Wolfsburg for 6.5 million. Good, quick fullback Mbabu. Switzerland international. Got lots of international appearances as well as Champions League experience for Wolfsburg as well. And Issa Diop recently moved from West Ham for £15 million to improve their centre-back partnership. Out deals for Fulham before we get on to an overall about it all. Fabio Cavallio for an undisclosed fee to Liverpool. Andrea Frank, Zambo and Guisa to Napoli for an undisclosed fee. G. Mikel Seri joins Hull on a free transfer. 
Timmy Abraham has joined Austrial Perea on a free transfer. Stefan Sessegnon has gone to Charlton on a season-long loan. Cyrus Christie has been released. Fabry has been released. Michael Hector has been released. Alfie Mawson has gone to Wickham on a free transfer. So they've so they've got a lot of outgoings out for them. They've managed to get a lot off the wage bill, players that they don't want. But they've also managed to bring in strength and depth in their squad, such as Diop and Babu, Pereira, Paulinia and Leno as well. As experienced, such as Shane Duffy and Mena Solomon as well. So we'll see how Fulham get on. They got off to a great start in the league after a 2 0 draw against Liverpool. But we'll see how they get on going forward. And there is more time in the transfer window as well. Leeds, they've been very, very busy in the transfer market. They've brought in Joel Robles from Real Betis on a free transfer as a backup goalkeeper. They brought in US internationals Tyler Adams and Brendan Aronson from RB Leipzig and Red Bull Salzburg for £44.7 million for the both of them. They're both very attacking players. One plays in the wing, one plays in the centre attacking midfield position. They both got off to a really good start actually this season. Leeds have won both of their games if I'm not wrong. Got off to a really good start this season, Leeds, and they'll be hoping that they can keep the momentum going. They brought in Darko Gayambi from Manchester City for £5 million. He'll probably go into the under-21s. Rasmus Christiansen from Salzburg as well for £10 million. Fullback experienced in the Champions League as well. Mark Roker from Bayern Munich for £10 million. Champions League experience winning trophies at Bayern Munich. Can only serve them well. Lewis Sinstrella from Feyenoord for 25.4 million. Good attacking player. Knows how to get forward and also defend as well. And knows how to put a shift in for the team. And Sonny Perkins from West Ham as a free transfer who will go into their under-23 squad. The notable outgoings for Leeds was Rafinha to Barcelona for 55 million. And Calvin Phillips to Manchester City for 50 million. They've also loaned out Ryan Edmondson to Carlisle. No, he's gone on an undisclosed fee. Uh, Charlie Cresswell has gone to Millwall on loan and had a really good start to the season. Tyler Roberts has gone to QPR on loan. Jamie Shackleton has also gone to Millwall on loan. And they have released players such as Lewis Bate has gone to Oxford on loan. Helder Costa has gone to Al Hihad on loan. And they've released just youngsters such as Alfie Hughes, Debock as well. So Leeds transfer business has been very good. They have really invested that money back from Rafinha and Phillips into the squad. And they'll probably be looking to get a few more players in before the end of the window. But as I said, they've had a really good start to the season. And they've got a good manager with Jesse Marsh as well. So we'll see how they get on. Leicester, really, really difficult window for Leicester. They brought in no incomings at all. But they have sold a few players, most notably Kasper Schmeichel to Nice for an undisclosed fee. And Hamza Chowdhury joins Watford on loan as well. T players like Madison and Tillemans are being linked away, but the most likely one is Tillemans to Arsenal for £25 million. He's got a year left on his contract. And it'll be really hard for Leicester to keep him because he's not going to sign a new contract. So Leicester are really in a predicament at the moment. Nothing much else to say on Leicester. Just hope they can bring in a player or two to please the fans and try and keep a few of their big stars as well. Liverpool have made three new signings for the new season. They brought in young Scottish fullback Calvin Ramsey, which I've touched on in a previous video for £6.5 million. They brought in Darwin Nunes, which I have touched upon on my channel. Please go and check out that video. From Benfica for £85 million. And Fabio Cavallio as well from Fulham for an undisclosed fee. They've let youngsters go such as Tyler Morton to Blackburn on loan. They've let Ben Davis go to Rangers for £4 million. Reese Williams to Blackpool on loan. Um, Nico Williams to Nottingham Forest for £16 million. Divock Origi left the club to join AC Milan on a free transfer. Lorius Carius was released. Ben Woodburn went to Preston on a free transfer. Connor Bradley joins Bolton on a loan. He's had a very good start to the season. Sadio Mane joins Bayern Munich for £35 million. 
and Minamino leaves to join Monaco for £15.5 million. Pounds. So they've made quite a bit of money back from the sales, such as Davis, most notably Mane, and also Nico Williams, as well as Minamino. So that bit of money they spent, they have made a little bit of it back, which is credit to Liverpool. They seem to make a lot of money back for some of their bang average players. They brought in three players. I don't see them really making any more signings, but if they do... It'll probably be in that central midfield role where Thiago and Keita are both out injured with Oxide chamberlain as well. So if they do make any more signings, it probably will be in that central midfield role. But at the moment, you can't really complain about Liverpool signings. They've, both, they've all got off to a good start and we'll see how they get on. Manchester City have made three signings of their own as well. Most notably, I've touched on in another video, they've signed Erling Haaland for £51 million for Borussia Dortmund. It was his release clause. They got him on an absolute bargain. Stefan Ortega as well for Armenia. Bellafield on a free transfer. He'll be the backup to um, Edison after Stefan got loaned out to Middlesbrough. Um Calvin Phillips as well also comes into the club for £50 million. He will be the replacement for Fernandinho. Some of the outgoings for City, Raheem Sterling to Chelsea for £47.5 million. Pedro Porro goes to Sporting Lisbon for £7.2 million. Gavin Bazunu goes to Southampton for £15 million. James Trafford goes to Bolton on a second loan. As I said, Fernandinho leaves to go back to his native Brazil on a free transfer. Tyler Howard Bellis has joined Vincent Company on loan at Burnley with CJ Regan Riley as well. Gabriel Jesus to Arsenal for £45 million, which I've already touched on. And they've loaned a lot of their young players out, such as Doyle, um, Callum Doyle, as well as Stack Zephan, Murich, and also Zinchenko going to Arsenal as well. So they've got a lot of players out on loan City. Wanted to trim that squad a little bit as well, make some money back as well as buy. They were looking for Cucurella, but obviously he went to Chelsea on a permanent deal, so they are looking for another left back. They have signed someone called Mario Gomez, I think, from Anderlecht, but it hasn't been confirmed yet for about £11 million. So we'll see how City get on. They will be looking for a few more signings, I think, but... Best of luck to them. Manchester United, on the other hand, the club that I watch and grew up watching, have had a terrible transfer window, let's be honest. Um, they brought in Christian Eriksen on a free transfer. Really good signing, in my opinion. He'll bring a lot of creativity, a lot of wrong-range passing, a lot of leadership, and also a lot of football knowledge to the team. Tyrell Malasia from Feyenoord for £14.7 million. Good signing as well. Good young, quick left-back. Hungry to be successful. And I'm sure he will dislodge Luke Shaw at some point. And the Sandro Martinez from Ajax for £56.7 million. Real controversial one, this one. He's not had a very good start at the club. Five foot nine. They keep saying that he's not a centre-back. But I think he can become a centre-back over time. He just needs to get used to the physicality of the Premier League. But I'm sure he'll be okay. Alps, Alex Tellez to Sevilla on loan. Paul Pogba obviously to Juventus for a free one. Mata released, Jesse Lingard released. Matic joins Roma on loan. Cavani released, Lee Grant released. Mella joins Wickham on a free. Divine released. And Paul Wollstone released. Dean Henderson joins Nottingham Forest on loan. And Andreas Pereira joined Fulham for £10 million. United need to start buying players quick. We're being linked with Frankie de Jong from Barcelona, which has been going on forever. And they're being linked with a move for Andre Rabiot as well from Juventus. Um, and also Marco Anatovic from Bologna as well. I don't want Anatovic in my opinion. He's too... He's not good enough for United and he's not good enough for this level, to be honest. Um, he brings a lot of baggage with him as well, which I won't get into. Um, but yeah, United need to start signing players fast and start spending that money. But we'll see how they get on this. Two weeks left of the window. United have bottom of the league after two straight defeats. But we'll get in. I've got into that in another video on the channel. So please go and check that out as well. But we'll see how United get on in the window. Yeah, let's see how they get on. Newcastle 
have signed four players in this window. They signed Matt Target on a permanent from Aston Villa for £15 million. They brought in Nick Pope from Burnley for £10 million. The most notable signing and probably the biggest one of the window is Sven Botman from Lille for £35 million. He will bring physicality, strength and experience and also improve that Newcastle bat line massively with his height and his experience in the Champions League as well. And they brought in a youngster called Charlie McCarthy, MacArthur from McKillmonick for an undisclosed fee. The players they've let go are such as Kieran Clark on loan to Sheffield United. Um, Freddie Woodman joins Preston for an undisclosed fee. Isaac Hayden joins Norwich on loan. Jeff Hendrick goes to Reading on loan. And Dwight Gale goes to Stoke for an undisclosed fee. So we'll see what Newcastle's business is like. They are still looking in the market for players. For a striker, notably, I think. So we'll see how they get on. I'm sure Newcastle will continue to strengthen, but they're doing it the right way. They're not going out splashing the cash straight away. They're doing it in a process. And Eddie Howe has done a fantastic job at Newcastle. So I can only commend them for what they're doing. And I'm sure they'll have a fantastic season. Nottingham Forest have been the busiest club in the Premier League. Let's have a look at what they've been doing. They've signed like 16 players. They've signed Remu Frulet from Atalanta for an undisclosed fee. Cheku Kuyate on a free transfer. Emmanuel Dennis from Watford for an undisclosed fee. Orel Mangala from Stuttgart for 12.7 million. Taiwo Awunye from Union Berlin for 17.5 million, who got his first goal of the season at the weekend. Musa Nakate from Mainz for 17 million. Nico Williams from Liverpool for 17 million. Brandon Oegua from Alaquense for an undisclosed fee. Gwent Bianchini from Troyes for an undisclosed fee. Omar Richards from Bayern Munich for an undisclosed fee. Dean Henderson on loan from Manchester United, Wayne Hennessy from Burnley on a free, Lewis O'Brien and Harry Toffolo both from Huddersfield on undisclosed fees, and Jesse Lingard on a free transfer from Manchester United. So they've got a whole new squad, Nottingham Forest. They've spent an awful lot of money. Most of that money they got from promotion they've probably spent on. They are being linked again with... Um, James Garner, obviously, of Manchester United. And a few more players as well. But, wow, they've got a whole new squad there. They've had to let a lot of players go, which we will get into now. They've let Bryce Samba go to Lentz for an undisclosed fee. Figueredo to Hull on a free transfer. Gaitan Bong has been released. Carl Jenkinson has been released. Uh, yeah, most Lewis Graben has been released as well, the striker. So they've let a lot of players go on a free transfer to get them off the wage budget, but also strengthen massively with Premier League experience as well. So Nottingham Forest got their opening win of the season against West Ham yesterday. So they'll be hoping for a stronger start to the season and hopefully survive as well. So best of luck to Nottingham Forest. And if they continue to sign players, then... They'll be very noticeable and very strong in the Premier League this season. Southampton have signed a few players this season. They've signed Armel Bella Kotchap from Bolcham for 9.5 million. They signed Remio Lavia from Man City for 12 million goalkeeper. They've signed Joe Rebo from Rangers for 10 million pounds. Gavin Bazunu, another goalkeeper from Man City. For £15 million. Lavia is not a goalkeeper. Actually he's a central defensive midfielder. Matthias Liss is a goalkeeper from Altai. For a free transfer. And Sekou Mara from Bordeaux. A striker. French striker as well. For an undisclosed fee. Very promising striker too. The outs at Southampton. Nathan Teller has joined Burnley. On a season long loan. Fraser Forster has joined Tottenham Hotspur. On a free transfer. Harry Lewis has joined Bradford on a free transfer. Um, Shane Long has joined Reading on a free transfer. Will Smallbone has gone to Stoke on a free on a loan. And Will Ferry has joined Cheltenham for an undisclosed fee. So Southampton are bringing in a lot of younger players, especially goalkeepers and more attacking minded players. A lot of young players though, Southampton, and they will still be in the market for more players, I'm sure. But 
Ralph Asanuto, he knows what he wants from his players. He knows what kind of players he wants. So we'll see how he gets on. Tottenham have signed a lot of good players. They've signed Ivan Perisic on a free from Inter Milan. They've signed Fraser Forster on a free from Southampton. And they've signed Yevs Basuma for £35 million from Brighton and Old Albion. £60 million for Richarlison from Everton. Clement Langley on a loan from Barcelona. And Jed Spence for £20 million from Middlesbrough. The outgoings from Spurs, Giovanni Lo Celso has joined Villarreal on a loan. Joe Roden has joined Rennes in France on a season-long loan. Simon Bergvine has gone to Ajax on a permanent deal worth £26.45 million. Cameron Carter-Vickers has joined Celtic for an undisclosed fee. Jack Clark has gone to Sunderland for £10 million. Uh, Troy Parrott has gone to Preston on a season-long loan. Dane Scarlett has gone to Portsmouth on a season-long loan as well. So they're getting a lot of their younger players out on a loan to give them experience in first-team football. But the additions that Spurs have added in Perisic, Forster, Basuma, Richarlison, Lengley and Spence, a mixture of experience and youth to develop as well. Perisic will bring the experience, the versatility, the leadership as well. Richarlison will bring goals to that team as well as strength in the front three. Basuma will bring strength and depth and also good defensive cover in that central defensive midfield role who can also get a goal as well. Langley will strengthen that defence up as well. The experience he's got from Barcelona will only benefit Conte and the team. So cracking business from Tottenham. They got it all done very early as well before the season and they're still in the market for players as well. So we'll see how Spurs get on and see who they will continue to sign. West Ham then have brought in a few players. They brought in Gianluca Scamacca from Sassoulu for £35.5 million. He's a striker. He will compete with Mikel Antonio up front. They've signed Nefu Ogard as well from Rennes for £30 million. A centre-back who has had a good start to the season as well. Afonso Ariola has come back on a permanent deal this time. Uh, for £10.5 million. Pounds. They've signed Flynn Downs from Swansea for £12 million. Pounds. A good young midfielder. Versatile as well. Can get himself about. Will be good squad player. Maxwell Cornet as well. Joins from Burnley for £7.5 million. Pounds. And a young player as well. Patrick Kelly joins from Coleraine for an undisclosed fee. The outs for... West Ham, Nikola Vlasic has joined Torino on a loan. Alise has gone to Sunderland for an undisclosed fee. Mark Noble has obviously retired, so best of luck to him. Andrei Yarmolenko has joined Al Ain on a free transfer. Ryan Fredericks has gone to Bournemouth on a free transfer. Nathan Holland has joined MK Dons on a free. And Issa Diop has gone to Fulham for £15 million. So West Ham are getting the players out, but also getting the players in. But fans are still very, very desperate for more signings. They really want to freshen that team up because they think it's very, very stale. And I would agree with them. They just need to freshen it up with a bit more youth, with a bit more talent in that team and a bit more depth as well. And I'm sure West Ham will be okay. The final team in the transfers then is Wolverhampton Wanderers. They have just signed... Consalo Guedes from Valencia for an undisclosed fee. They've signed permanently Juan He Chan from RB Leipzig for £10 million. They signed Luco Leon Chiwomi from AFC Wimbledon for an undisclosed fee. Don Plank as well for Dorking Wanderers on a free transfer. And Nathan Collins from Burnley for £20.5 million. The outgoings for Wolves. Connor Cody joins Everton on a loan deal. Fabio Silva joins Anderlecht on loan. Ruben Vanagri has gone to Sporting Lisbon on loan. Then gone to Everton. Uh, Roman Saiz has gone to Besiktas on a free transfer. John Ruddy has gone to Birmingham on a free transfer. Key Jana Hoover has joined PSV on a season long loan. Ryan Giles has gone to Middlesbrough on a season long loan. Marcel has been released along with Sanderson, Lewis Richards, Taylor Perry, and Longwick. So Wolves have got a lot of players out of their wage bill, like Fabio Silva, Connor Cody, as well as Vinagri. But they've also brought in some players that they wanted, such as Guedes on that left hand side of the pitch. 
and a few youngsters as well as Nathan Collins to replace Connor Cody too. So we'll see how Wolves get on. Please remember to like and subscribe and share the channel as well if you enjoy these videos. This is part two to the part one that I did before earlier in the day. So please go and support both videos. I really appreciate it. And please get down in the comments below what you think about your team and how their transfer window has been. Has it been good? Has it been bad? Do you think you'll do well this season? Let me know down below in the comments or also message me on my socials as well, which I will leave down in the comments as well. Until next time, see you later.